Hey there, Emmanuel here from WebDevFuel and today I want to give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes of the HTMX and Go SAS blueprint. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to explain to you one of the things that I think is great about HTMX and more specifically about using HTML as the source of truth or in other words, as the state of your application. But before we continue, if you want to get access to the HTMX and Go SAS blueprint, go to webdefuel.com forward slash HGSB. Inside, you'll learn not only the basics around HTMX and Go, but you'll also learn how to build a project management system completely from scratch with features like authentication, tasks, project, multi-tenancy, sharing, and much more. Again, to join the HTMX and Go SAS Blueprint, go to webdefuel.com forward slash HGSB. So go ahead and type that inside of your browser or click on the link in the description down below. Now before I go ahead and take a look at the project management system that we are building inside the HTMX and Go SAS Blueprint, let's take a look at this diagram so we can better understand exactly what are the pros compared to React when you are using HTMX to go ahead and build a web application. Now, there are a lot of things that make HTMX great, but one thing that stands out is the ability to have your data, your UI and your actions all tied together without us having to do a lot of transformations before going ahead and displaying the UI to our users. So if we take a look here at the React example, as you can see, we first of all go ahead and render the initial UI. And then you can imagine that, for example, in order to go ahead and update a particular part of our application, we first of all need to go ahead and make a data request to our backend in order to then go ahead and create something inside of the backend or update it. And this is usually related to relationships inside of the database. So you can imagine, for example, that if we have a project and we want to go ahead and share it with a particular user, we first of all need to go ahead and grab that particular project from our database to ensure that it exists. And then after that, we can go ahead and perform an action on the backend in order to, for example, share that particular project with that particular user. But again, one of the things that makes React worse when it comes to development experience compared to HTMX is that, as you can see, we have a lot of steps between rendering the UI and our GET requests. So first of all, again, we go ahead, we render the initial UI, we then go ahead and make a GET request so we can go ahead and, for example, get the data about our project so we can later go ahead and share it with our user inside of the backend. But before here rendering our UI, we first of all need to go ahead, grab the JSON that is coming back from our backend, which is usually the case with React or other JavaScript front-end libraries. And then we also have to do here a transformation to that data. Because when we go ahead and receive that JSON data from our backend, the backend doesn't have any knowledge of exactly what's going to happen with it. And so we need to go ahead and make transformations to that data before we can actually ensure that the user is seeing that data in the correct form inside of our UI. And then after we go ahead and render our UI, as you can see, we are able to make a post request to our backend in order to go ahead and in this example, share a particular project with a particular user. But then after we go ahead and actually succeed in sharing that project with that user, we then again need to get some JSON back from our backend. And again, we need to go ahead and transform it. And this, when multiplied by a bunch of different features inside of our web applications, can become very cumbersome. And that's again because in order to be able to render our UI, we are getting our data from our UI in a different format than the format that the browser is going to display that data in. So the browser needs to display the data in HTML, but we are getting JSON back from our server. And that means that we always have to do this little dance. So we need to get the JSON, then we need to transform it. And finally, we can go ahead and render the UI. And we also need to always ensure that when we go ahead and render the UI, all those actions. So in this case, if we take a look here at this post request, we will need to ensure that this post request actually made the request to the correct endpoint. 
and then display the data correctly when we get the response back. So again, we then need to go ahead, parse here the JSON, and then also do transformations. And finally, we are able to go ahead and render the UI. So in this case, for example, we would want to go ahead and share this project with a particular user. And we would also want to go ahead and then display inside of our dashboard that that particular action was successful and also add new actions to that particular share. So that, for example, after our user is using our dashboard and the particular user goes ahead and shares a project, he can then go ahead later and revoke that same access without having to do, for example, a full page refresh. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the same thing, but when using HTMX. So as you can see, again, we have our rendering of the UI, which is the initial render. So for example, when we navigate to forward slash project and then forward slash a particular ID, we get to see the project, for example, name. And then we also have then the ability to go ahead and share that particular project. But here with HTMX, as you can see, the cool thing about this is that when we go ahead and make that get request to our backend in order to be able to know exactly what project we are trying to work with and to ensure that it actually exists inside of the backend, we not only get here the data, but also our entire UI and also all of the actions that we need around that particular context. So here, when we initially render our project inside of the share tab, we will not only get the data, but also all of the UI already in HTML format and also all of the actions already there so we don't have to do any kind of transformations. So this means that when we get our HTML back from our backend or from our server, it already includes in there all of the actions that it needs in order to make adjustments to itself. And after that, we go ahead and render that UI which HTMX automatically does for us. And in the case of React, it also automatically does it for us. But when we go ahead and share a particular project with a particular user, so let's say that we go ahead and make a post request to our backend, the stuff that we get back already also includes not only the data about that particular share, but also all of the UI already in HTML format and also all of the actions related to that particular share. So in this case, we will automatically get inside of the browser the actions that allow us to, for example, revoke the share access to that particular project. And finally, down here, as you can see, we go ahead and we render the UI, which again, HTMX does all of that for us. So now let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how this works inside of this application, which again, is the application that we are using inside of the HTMX and Go SAS Blueprint in order to build a project and see exactly how we can use all of the features of HTMX and Go. And then also we add on top of it PostgreSQL and Tailwind CSS. But as you can see, when we go ahead and make that initial render UI, we already get here inside of this button, the actions that we need in order to be able to add a new user to this project. So in other words, to be able to share this project with another user. As you can see here, we have hx-get, and then we have forward slash project, forward slash two, which is the ID of this particular project, and then share, and then new. And this is going to send a request to our server, and then it is going to allow us to render the UI in order to be able to share this project with a new user. And we don't have to do any kinds of transformations to that response that we get back from the server. When we get that response back from the server, it is already in HTML format and HTMX automatically inserts it inside of the DOM. Now let's go ahead and try to click on this button. And as you can see, it displays here the entire UI that we need in order to be able to share this project with a new user. And as you can see, we get here a form element that already has here this HX post. So if we take a look here at this HX post, it says here also project and then forward slash two and finally forward slash share. And again, when we go ahead now and submit this, this part of our code in HTML format, when it came back from the server, it already included this particular action, 
for us in order to be able to go ahead and share this project with particular user. And we didn't need to do any kinds of transformations or keep all of this logic both inside of our backend and then also inside of our frontend. And the same thing applies here for the cancel button. If we go ahead and click on this button, that action is already included inside of that HTML that we get back from the server. And if we go ahead and add another user again, as you can see, the same UI here is displayed all with HTML. So we are not using any kind of JavaScript frontend framework. And now if we go ahead and for example, type in here, let's say webdevfuel at webdevfuel.com. And then we go ahead and share this with a new user. As you can see, this was now shared. So it goes to the backend. It does all of the logic that it needs. It adds it to the database. If you want to, for example, send an invitation, we also have that particular functionality inside of the application. But again, the important part about this is that when we get this now back from the server, if we take a look here at our network tab and we take a look here at this share request that we made here to the server, and then we open here our response. Let's just ensure that we can actually see all of this. As you can see, we get this response back from the server. And here inside of this particular response, we get all of the HTML that we need in order to be able to render this. And along with that, we also get here this HX delete, which is the action that will allow us to revoke the access to this project for this particular user. So again, we not only get the data back, so we get here, for example, the email address of the, the, the user that we just shared with, with, but we also get here the entire UI. So if we take a look here at this entire thing, this is the entire UI that we need in order to display the thing that gets back from the server. But also we, again, and this is very important, also get all of the actions related to this particular context and in this case, the context is that we went ahead, we shared this with a particular user, and we also want to be able to perform actions on that particular share. And in this case, we can go ahead and revoke the access to a particular user. So if we now go ahead and shrink this a little bit, and we click here on revoke access, and we go ahead and confirm this, as you can see, this user doesn't have access any longer to this particular project. So if we go ahead and refresh this page, as you can see, we don't have that user there anymore. 